Hey guys, here's a short part two that I'm going to respond just on video because I don't have the time to waste my time on this guy, Nick Brazin. So here we go. Um, if you can see, he's commented uh, and copied and pasted my thing. He's doing the same thing. I well, first, uh, you know, who's going to pay off the blah, blah, blah. I said this in the first last video, so let's get to it. Well, first, this is all about your voluntary comment. And now you're kind of abandoning that, which was the whole point all along. How is, am I... How am I abandoning that? But I'm sorry you're just wrong about what happens today. The children of someone who dies in debt are not obligated at all to pay the debt. The debt is settled from the dead person's estate, and if that person, if that isn't enough to satisfy the debt, the lender is out of the remaining money. The children today do not inherit their parents' debt upon their death. That's simply, you're simply completely wrong about that. Okay. And, uh, I mean, go ahead and just live your life, dude. Like, go ahead and see how that works out. <laughs> and while it's certainly fair to point out that these are blah, 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 wrong, they're actually blah, blah, blah. Boy, talking about things out of context. This is talking about circumcision and eating Passover meal, not releasing non-Hebrew slaves at the year of Jubilee. I can't believe you said this. Um, there is literally nothing in the Bible that delineates non-Hebrew slaves from Hebrew slaves. And the rules are, uh, well, and the Hebrews are non-Hebrews, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yes, you got to ask the, for the Bible verse. That supports that, bro. Because it turns out the Bible never says that it does. Anywhere. Part of my problem. And part of my point. What do you, What? Why would the Leviticus passage say that you may bequeath your sons to inherit as a possession for forever if they were to be released? Which is, it never says. You really need to have to dig into this to understand it. I'm not judging you, man. I went through the same stuff in my journey for sure. Um, again, there is no different law. Why would it say that? Because you're a pussy. And you're reading that version. So let's go ahead and read a version since this man does not want to read and only wants to cite a single verse out of the entire chapter let's read the entire chapter the seventh year the lord then the lord said to moses on mount sinai speak to the israelites and say to them when you enter the land that i am giving you and the, the land must observe a sabbath to the lord for six years you may sow your crop field and prune your vineyard and gather its crops. But in the seventh year, there shall be a Sabbath mm -hmm. of complete rest for the land, a Sabbath to the Lord. You are not to sow your field or prune your vineyard. You are not to reap the aftergrowth of your harvests or gather the grapes of your untended untended vines hmm. the land must have a year of complete rest whatever the land yields during the sabbath year shall be food for you for yourself your manservant and maidservant the hired hand or foreigner who stays with you and for your livestock and the wild animals in your land all its growth may serve as food the year of jubilee and you shall count off seven Sabbaths of years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbaths of years amount to 49 years. Then you are to sound the horn far and wide on the tenth day of the seventh month, the day of atonement. You shall sound it throughout your land. So you are to consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty in the land for all its inhabitants. It shall be your jubilee. When each of you is to return to his property and to his clan, the fiftieth year will be a jubilee for you. You are not to sow the land or reap its aftergrowth or harvest the unintended vines, for it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You may eat only the crops taken directly from the field. Return of Property In the year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his own property. If you make a sale to your neighbor or of 
a purchase from him. You must not take advantage of each other. You are to buy from your neighbor according to the number of years since the last jubilee. He is to sell you according to the number of harvest years remaining. You shall increase the price in the proportion to a greater number of years or decrease in it proportion to a lesser number of years, for he is selling you a given number of harvests. Do not take advantage of each other, but fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. The blessing of obedience. You are to keep my statutes and carefully observe my judgments, so that you may dwell securely in your land. Then the land will yield its fruit, so that you can eat for your fill and dwell in its safety in safety in the land. Now you may wonder, what will we eat in the seventh year if we do not sow or gather our produce? But I will send my blessing upon you in the sixth year, so that the land will yield a crop sufficient for three years. While you are sowing in the eighth year, you will be eating from the har previous harvest until the ninth year's harvest comes in. Are you hearing this? This is amazing. The law of redemption. The land must not be permanent, sold permanently because it's mine. And you are but foreigners and residents with me. Thus, for every piece of property you possess, you must provide for the redemption of the land. If your brother becomes impoverished and sells some of his property, his nearest of kin may come and redeem what his brother has sold. Or, if a man has no, no one to redeem it for him, but he prospers and acquires enough to redeem his land, he shall calculate the years since its sale, repay the balance to the man whom he sold it, and return to his property. But, if he cannot en obtain enough to repay him, what he sold will remain in possession of the buyer until the year of Jubilee. In the Jubilee, however, it is to be released so that he may return to his property. If a man sells a house in a walled city, he retains his right of redemption until a full year after its sale. During that year, it may be redeemed. If it is not redeemed by the end of the full year, then the house in the walled city is permanently transferred to its buyer and its descendants. It is not to be released in the Jubilee. But houses in villages and with no walls around them are to be considered as open fields. They may be redeemed, and they shall be released in the Jubilee. Very interesting. As for the cities of the Levites, the Levites always have the right to redeem their houses in the cities they possess. So whatever belongs to the Levites may be redeemed, the house sold in a city they possess, or must be released in the, in the Jubilee, because the houses in the cities of the Levites are the possessions among the Israelites, are their possession among the Israelites. But... The open pasture land around this city may not be sold, for this is their permanent possession. Do you see how that directly shows what is to be done on the Jubilees? Let's continue. Redemption of the poor. Now, if your countryman becomes destitute and cannot support himself among you, then you are to help him as you would a foreigner or a stranger so that he can continue to live among you. Does that happen in society today? I mean, this guy does not know, know nothing about what he's talking about. This is an amazing, amazing system. Do not take any interest or profit from him, usury, because that's a sin, but fear your God that your countrymen may live among you. You must not lend him your silver at interest or sell him your food for profit. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, that is Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan, Canaan, and to be your God. Redemption of bondmen. If a countryman among you becomes destitute and sells himself to you, then you must not force him into slave labor. Let him stay with you as a hired worker or temporary resident. He is to work for you until the year of Jubilee. Then he and his children are to be released, and he may return to his clan and to the property of his fathers, or he may stay. Because the Israelites are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt, they may not be, are not to be sold as slaves. 
You are not to rule over them harshly, but you shall fear your God. Yep. Your men servants and maid servants shall come from the nations around you. Men servants and maid servants. Interesting that it doesn't say slave. It says servants. You from whom you may purchase them. Do you see how the, if your countrymen can slay, sell themselves, why wouldn't the neighboring nations sell themselves? You may also purchase them from the foreigners residing among you and their clans living among you who are born in the land. These may become your property. You may leave them to your sons after you to inherit as property. You can make them slaves for life. But as for your brothers, the Israelites, no man may rule harshly over his brother. Slaves for life. Hmm. Now it's very interesting, right? That he says slaves, but it says men servants and maid servants. Isn't it crazy how these little fucking... Okay. Redemption of servants. If a foreigner residing among you prospers, but your countryman dwelling near him becomes destitute and sells himself to the foreigner or to a member of his clan, he retains the right of redemption after he has sold himself. One of his brothers may redeem him. Either his uncle or his cousin or any close relative from his clan may redeem him. Or, if he prospers, he may redeem himself. He and his purchaser will count the time from the year he sold himself to the year of Jubilee. The price of the sale will be determined by the year number of years based on the daily wages of a hired hand. If many years remain, he must pay for his redemption in proportion to his purchase price. If only a few years remain until the Jubilee, he is to calculate and pay his redemption according to his, his remaining years. He shall treat, be treated like a man hired from year to year, but a foreigner, foreign owner must not rule over him harshly in your sight, even if he is not redeemed in any of the, these ways. He and his children shall be released in the year of Jubilee, for the Israelites are my servants. They are my servants, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Notice that there was a difference between the native-born and the foreigner. And notice that I have already established in the last video that all one has to do to become as if native-born is to circumcise oneself. Now you're a native born. Now you're an Israelite that you cannot allow your brother to be a slave and it must be released by Jubilee. There's there, there it's so black and white and straightforward that you you seem to this person seems to really have an issue understanding how simple it is. If you are if if the title of native born Israelite is simply a uh, action of circumcision and following the ways of our Lord. I mean, it's a simple ask and it will simply take them out of their bondage. And notice also in the last video how the woman called out for help and God helped. Don't you think a righteous God would give the righteous help it, it, it just, it really is avoiding the actual contents of what we are actually reading. If they were to be released, which it never says, you really need do have to dig to understand it. I'm not judging a man. I went through the, so a person, which he just blows by here, I think earlier here. I think we talked about it, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it later on? Well, we'll continue. <laughs> From dictionary.com for the definition of chattel slavery, the enslaving and owning of human beings and their offspring as property, able to be bought, sold, and forced to work. Forced to work without wages. Without wages? As distinguished from other system of forced, unpaid, or low-wage labor, also considered to be slavery. See, once again, one of the things I mentioned 
in the video is this constant changing of the meaning of words. And a dictionary definition from dictionary.com isn't a fucking, like, do you, you don't have the comprehension to just fucking understand what's happening that you need to force it into your modern understanding of what colonial chattel slavery is. There's a fucking difference. And that you acknowledged it in your last comment and then are now saying, okay, well, there's a difference between American slavery and biblical slavery. American chattel colonial slavery and biblical debt servitude. And we're looking all through that. We just read the entirety of chapter 25 for this video just to prove a point. Slaves are released. So where does this mention direct force kidnapping? It doesn't because it's not part of the definition of chattel slavery. Exactly what I said. And I said pretty much because I didn't think it was necessary to quote the entire definition. Anyone can find it online, but I see now that it is. Sorry about that. Shut the fuck up. This guy's entire fucking tone has been uh, insulting. The end. He's wondering why I'm cursing later on. Okay. Just so that we can establish the enslaving and owning of a human being. How does one enslave someone? It's like, yeah, I, if you go to enslaving and owning a human being and then you had to fucking look up each of those, you don't fucking understand? So, it was, so they just appeared in your fucking possession? You didn't take them? And if they sold themselves into servitude, would that be chattel slavery? You're a fucking moron. So when, okay, so you literally can't cite the, okay, this is really getting confrontational, which I, is not what I do this. Well, then maybe you should fucking fix your words because you sound like an asshole, but sorry, this is not bullshit. I cited the verse that said that they were owned forever. And I also cited the verse myself where you can become a native born Israelite. Was that you? Okay. I can quote the verses, you verses in a petrol that literally say these release they the, the say these release laws apply to hebrews if you want i what okay but you said you read the bible so i'm assuming you know them if not let me know you're the one that can't cite a verse to support your claim you cited the verse about talking about circumcision eating the passover meal not at all about releasing non-hebrew slaves if you circumcise yourself, you are now a native-born Hebrew. As a, said above, totally out of context, which is what I thought you said we should avoid. Um, because you're a fucking Dunning-Kruger moron. And you can't understand that if you become a native-born, that makes you Hebrew. It doesn't make you non-Hebrew. It makes you Hebrew. You're no longer a stranger. You're native-born. Don't you understand words? You're fucking quoting me the dictionary, but you can't fucking read the goddamn words that I fucking quoted to you, you fucking moron. Here's the Gitmo fucking thing I said. This is just insulting to, to what I hope to be a productive discussion. Well, you just disagreed with God directly, bro. Is that productive? I kind of thought you would be better than that, bro. Plus, I am completely ignores my whole point, which you didn't even try to address, I might add. Which is what? This is why I made the other video. You go ahead and fucking wa watch it if you haven't read that. Watch the last one. But you're a moron. You know nothing about war. You have no fucking depth of understanding. And you just fucking saying this shit is just you shit coming out of your mouth. Which makes you an asshole. As I said in my kind of kidnapping, it's not slavery. It's kidnapping. That's because you're a moron. How does one enslave another person? How does another one per... Taylor, could you tell me how does a person enslave another person? Do they... Do you do that willingly? Okay, do you have to take that person, right? Yeah. Would that be kidnapping? Correct. I don't understand what this person is talking about. Kidnapping is not slavery. Yeah, it's not slavery. It's the kidnapping and forced... Into slavery. Yeah, so it's like, why the fuck can this person not understand it? Because they're a moron. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I thought I'd have a more productive conversation with you. You're a moron. You're not on the same level. 
the Bible condemns kidnapping people into slavery. Uh, exactly. But that is certainly not the only way people became slaves. You mean servants then? Because if it's not forced and it's voluntary, it's servitude. I talked about that in my original comment. For I mean, for peace sakes, God commanded himself slavery without kidnapping. Because you are reading an English rendition and you don't understand shit. Okay, I'm not making this up. I'm simply trying to understand it. And I'm getting insulted when I try. I just don't get that, man. You just insulted God, bro. You just insulted God. So, I mean, you've insulted me multiple times. And if you've watched the last video and you didn't understand, then here's your lesson as a gamma. You're an insulting asshole and you're talking down to me like you know more, but you don't. You can't understand that if a person kidnaps another person and then is found in the possession or sells them as in slavery, that's what is illegal. My God, boy, you are a fool. All right. Would you do you not understand that you sell yourself? Hour by hour, and in in in, a, in when you sell, oh my God, when you sell wages, when you sell yourself for an hourly wage, per hour you sell yourself, and when you sell yourself into slavery, in this time, that means that not only because people just fucking think that this is just some fucking, what was that show back in the day, Roots? No, no, what was it? With Danny Glover and they're and they're all slaves. I don't know. And they all want to fucking make it believe, make themselves believe that every slave situation is ten years a slave, and fucking Django. That's not how it happened. In reality, in reality, even during colonial slavery, this is a heavy fucking. In investment and if you sell yourself as property okay and we're not talking about kidnapping if a person sells themselves as property then you have to invest into them take care of them feed them and pay them and you give them a wage depending on what they're doing even slaves during the colonial times got fucking wages but they make it seem like oh what they did was if they didn't listen they fucking killed them and turned them into into dust and then put them into chocolate and that's where we get chocolate heads it's like what the fuck are you talking about you just paid for a fucking car let's say and it fucks up do you break that fucking car down and then eat it how much more so for a fucking human being are you stupid do you not know the basic idea of economics? Would you buy a person spending that all, all this money on them and then treat them like shit so they can wither away and die and be a bad investment? How can they be alive if you treat them shit like and give them to your sons? That's because they have the same rights as the Native born people, one law for all. And it's only a few steps to become a native born. We talked about it. You say it's out of context. I say you're a fucking moron. In the end here, I don't really think you, you, you're interested in the subject, it seems. You've made your Dunning-Kruger mind and refuse for some reason to address what the Bible actually says. It's crazy how much he's projecting what the fuck he's saying onto me. And means, and in context, you... you this is crazy. You don't know what kidnapping and enslaving a person is and then forcing them to a late because they oh oh but if they sell themselves into that's that's slavery, that's chattel slavery. No, it isn't. Chattel slavery is forced, forced, forced. You can't even read the own fucking definition that you've given me. That makes you a fool. I've spent years diving into this. Oh, oh boy, he's a little white robed wizard, isn't he? Reading and listening and learning. You're not listening or learning right now. So you're not better than me. So you might want to shut the fuck up and listen. You have evidently not no done much of that at all other than listen to Frank Turk videos. 
Oh, it's very interesting. Oh, Frank Turret is so pro Torah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That's sarcasm. And now that we've had two videos to respond to this with two large readings of your out of context quoted scriptures, I leave you to go be sad. Okay? And this is the problem I have when it comes to the subject. It's almost never addressed, honestly. And eventually I have to ask myself, why not? Because you're a fucking pussy moron that doesn't know anything about anything. And you live in a little bubble world that is shielded from actual nature and reality because of the thin veneer afforded to you by society that separates us from the animals. But when people stop being afraid of the government, because they don't follow the Christian morals that we have as a society because they fear God. They fear the government. That's why everybody does all these bad things in secret. You'll understand the perfectness of God's ways and laws. But until then, I would ask you to not be such a little pussy bitch. I wish you the best of luck. No, you don't. Don't fucking talk fake. Don't, make, don't, don't be a false witness. And there's no such thing as luck. I believe in God. You must not if you believe in luck, you fucking loser. But on this subject, at least, you don't seem to know what the fuck you're talking about. Oh, he wants to use the words fuck. Okay. Well, you don't know what the fuck. Let's go. Let's go back and just highlight these things. You don't know what these words and context means. The enslaving and owning of a human being and their offspring able to be bought and sold and forced to work without wages as distinguished from other systems of forced, unpaid, low-wage labor. So, enslaving and owning a human, does that sound like somebody uh, fucking volunteers for that and they just pop into existence? You're not allowed to kidnap someone and enslave them. Period. And if they, as you say, are not to be freed on the Jubilees, then all it takes is circumcision to be native-born. And you're like, oh, that's just about Passock. Why is it just about Passock? Why is it just about Passover? It's not. Let's find... I, I, I want to go back. I just want to go back and just find that, that uh, little verse there. <laughs> okay. Uh, boom. This is my comment, but I'm, I'm not trying to respond to it. God damn it. pass it if a foreigner resides with you and wants to celebrate the lord's passover all the males of the household must be circumcised then he may come near to celebrate it and he shall be like a native of the land so you're saying that it's just for passover the holiest day of all right hold on all right so one of the high sabbaths you're treated like a native of the land, because you've given yourself over to the covenant of Yah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you think it only counts for a day. Are you a fucking moron? You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's so insane that people can be so stupid, but luckily we can capitalize on this and use it as a way to teach other people, including maybe that person, to learn more, but in, in, in no doubt in my mind that this person does not actually want to learn anything from me because he wants to establish that, oh, slavery, oh, and slavery bad, so uh, Bible bad? No, you just don't understand. You're a pussy. You've never been in a fight. You never even had to think about taking over a land of people who fucking sacrifice their children. What's the alternative, boy? Killing all of them? What do you think is going to happen? Oh, they're all chained together, ch uh, ankle to ankle to ankle to ankle, working hard labor like they're fucking, like some fucking bad movie out of the 50s? These people had just been released from bondage. What do you think they treat the people in bondage like? And if you read the tarot canonical books like Jasher, Enoch, and Jubilees, 
Jubilees, then you would know more. But you don't. And so I instead would recommend you read the Bible, including all canonical books, including Joshua, Genesis, Joshua, Enoch, and Jasher. Uh, no, uh, Jubilees. Jubilees. So there ends my second uh, video uh, responding to bad comments that have no idea what they're talking about. Once again, what a Dunning-Kruger. This guy's a fool, but he wants to try to turn it on me. And then says, oh, you don't understand the words of context. And then if we just read it together, it's pretty fucking stupid. But hey, there cannot be happiness without sadness, cannot be dark without light. Or rather, there cannot be, yeah, there can't be dark without light. And so there needs to be that little reflection to remind us that there are a lot of stupid people that think stupid things and we need to correct them. And it is about being nice. This person thought they were being nice. All right? As I've said before, it's not about being nice. That's not what our religion's about. It's about being right. And he doesn't like being called pussy too fucking bad. He's a goddamn pussy. The, back, the fact is that Israelite could buy prisoners of other country wars. Yeah. Okay. Because they weren't kidnapped. All right. That's right. Is there a problem with that? You have no idea what's going on right now, do you? You don't understand how just... it. it people are so detached from how relevant all of this is. Because we've simply added a middleman. Just like we've done in bureaucracy and middle management. This is all fucking retarded. You don't think we cause fucking wars in other places or other wars and people have debt they have to pay off and they have to fucking live their life? It's like, dude, learn the way of the world. And it isn't this fucking fanciful thing that you think it is now because you watch fucking movies and TV shows and listen to music and have these little lollipops and fancy pants. The world hasn't changed. Just the names. Stay up, stay ready, stay locked and loaded. We are at war. Spiritually, mentally, physically. And it's time to arm ourselves. See you in the next video. Justification for violence, uh, defense, and stoning. Peace in. Shalom, shalom.